afternooning with an artisan, my sister, who plays with clay the way I spin words on the wheel of my mind. Rain soft and sweet as talcum, pats at the Mitchell's flat farm, sponging the afternoon's edges of clay, reverie and lineage. All story is supposed to be A to B, or at least C to Z, but ours, not forgetting the universe's clock that tick-tocks across galaxies and star paths, is more clay on the wheel or tea steeped in hot water. Mundane moments stretched from their smallness towards the ethereal, the ceremonial, the spiritual. Here memory eschews reality and dots join for meaning, coordinates on the map of our fleeting years. She sways with the wheel, revolving beyond the day, a vessel beholding absence with its third eye watching. Clay from under earth, now under chipped fingernails, under skin and into dreaming, contoured, cupped, redeeming. Slush and luscious slide, thirsting for birth centre, then racked, dried, kiln-fired, dialogue of utility's placenta. We break for tea in a space humming and safe from the harm of frayed relationships. The tea is stored in clay pots, scented with the sweat of leaves picked and dried under another sun's fierce face. This artisan is of the same clan, nose to slow, the breathing to seal, heat in its boiling heart, sear the ends of times past. She holds each handful of time spent in wholeness, hunger met in the gift of dead camellia flowers. It fingers down our throats, a harmony of ceremony, trust poised on the needle of a now shared story. Our grandfather, a farmer of clay soil, on a soldier's block, would wake us kids at dawn with a brusque, come on then, as if he was calling the cows, packing paper twists with handfuls of black tea leaves and counted spoonfuls of sugar's white bliss. After letting the chooks out, we'd fall in behind Pop, traipsing along in single file towards the back paddock. Not all stories of Pop are easy. He was a can man picking up night soil from London's back lanes before jumping a ship to Australia. After boxing his way around the country show circuit, he served as cannon fodder in Gallipoli and on the Somme, mustard gassed his return to a land grant and a marriage as misguided as many then left him binging booze and her just plain mad. But we, tired after hours in the sun on short primary school legs and urgently needing to pee, we'd be told to find a bush. Around this gruff older man, this meant giggling nervously while hopping away from fierce ants and getting scratched by fallen twigs. We weren't exactly city kids, somewhat feral in our Catholic mayhem. But the cows, they awed us. The ruse wowed us. The birds charmed us, and the ants scared us. We 
we felt like real bushfellas calling Bluey to the Kelpie to heal. And he would sit patiently looking up, flicking flies away with his tail. We'd finally slow down and pop and gather some dry twigs. He'd flare a redhead match empty a canteen of water into an old ash-scarred billy and with a handful of bushels boil over the fire spitting and tip the liquid into mugs overloaded with sweetness. He'd call the kelpie to come back from nosing old cowpats, tip out the bill on the embers and shamble the long way back all of us thinking of Gran's fresh scones with lemon curd and thick cream cooked on the old kookaburra wood fire stove with hot cocoa. But when we draw back from Utungan to the studio in Wanarua country, the clay storyboard fills the space with its intent of now belonging. Each tile's permanence marked out by miles of creative permanence, substance and imagination, the restless push and pull of how to do it another way, of how to find that point of balance where water meets land and the colour of sand is fired white by the sun, not this grey clay dug from the land in our ceaseless dreaming angst. The ebb and flow, wax and wane of tide to shore grass to soil seed to tree me to you and all the distances in between There is a nudging of story nodes now, joining dots unrelated, and it prompts me to recall a day on another song line at a nearby tea tree lake on the northern rivers. The water is the colour of long brewed tea to swim there was to be local, to know how to get there, how long to stay in the sun. If I were a ceramicist, I would build an artwork around this afternoon with the ghost of tea trees cooing across the kids, mud sliding brown sand, their father boiling up a cuppa on the portable gas stove and a faint swish in the trees. But here is the shape shifting back to now. Hunter Valley, Wanarua gums standing stark and tall like dark sentinels. The afternoon is over. The coordinates of clay and tea leaves have morphed into a brisk storm's petrichor. Clay, dust, ants, memories, all washed away finally, the way time gives and takes in good and bad parts unequally.